Lord, I dedicate to you this time on Saturday, May 2 of 2020, Athens time where I am, 7 p.m. I come before you in the name of Jesus. I'm actually responding to you as I believe you have called me to go live on Facebook and share my thoughts, share my heart, open my mouth and release the things that you would have me say at this time. So I'd like to glorify you, Lord, by surrendering my thoughts, by surrendering my heart, my soul, my emotions, by surrendering everything to you, Lord. I do not want to hold anything for myself. I don't want to have any thoughts of myself. I don't want to have any feelings, any ideas. I do not want to be affected by any knowledge that I have from the world. I just simply let go of everything and I give myself over to you so that you may speak through me as you see fit. Lord, I would like to humble myself before you right now. I would like to completely eliminate anything that is coming from me so that you may freely use me. Lord, I pray that my emotions be completely numb, that my emotions will not interfere with whatever you want to say, so that I will not stop anything that is coming out of my mouth. Having said that, for the protection of the people who hear me, Given that I am a human being like anyone else, I pray that you would give discernment and wisdom to everyone so that if I say things which are not from you, if I become deceived in any way, if I become somehow sidetracked and what I say is not from you, Father, I pray that you would give the grace to people who hear to discern between what comes from the Spirit and what comes from the flesh or any other source that is not of you. Father, I pray that by your anointing, you would bear witness in the hearts of people when the word is from you. And Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus also that you would protect what is happening right now from every and all forms of evil influence, any form of distraction, any form of intervention, any form of magic, witchcraft, voodoo, any form of soulish, psychic power that is trying to interfere or intervene, I hereby decree it is bound and completely unable to interfere in the name of Jesus. This will be a free flow without any hindrance or influence in the name of Jesus. Before I begin, I'd like to remind or maybe say for those who may not know that there is no prophetic word that can be taken for granted to be from God except whatever the Lord bears witness to in our spirit that it comes from him. In fact, in the midst of so many false prophecies going on, at this time during this season, in the midst of so many prophets, even acknowledged prophets, even acknowledged people of God of some fame rising up, even decreeing dates, decreeing things, pretending to be from God, only ridiculing themselves in hindsight. In the midst of such thing going on in the world, it would be at least foolish of any one of us to rise up and say, I am the true prophet of God who says what God is saying right now, don't listen to anyone else or what have you. It would be utterly foolish of mine, utterly foolish of me to do anything like this. What I can promise on my part is that I do my best, my best to share with you what I sense the Lord is speaking to me that I have to speak to you that I have to release. Let it be clear before we begin, I am not going to prophesy when the coronavirus is going to end, or at least I don't think so. I am not going to prophesy specific events to come, at least I don't think so. And why is that? Because I'm not a diviner. I'm not into Python spirit prophecies. 
I am trying to serve the Lord by sharing the living word of the Lord. And the living word of the Lord is not, is not to predict the future. The psychics do that. The diviners do that. The Lord is not interested in having us predict the future. He knows the future. He does not need to predict it. He does not need to prophesy predictions about the future. He knows very well everything that he is about to do. The only thing he needs to speak to us is what we should know as we are moving in his timeline. What we need to know so that we can be aligned to his heart, to his plans. How can we be more prepared for the things that he wants from each one of us? That's what true prophecy is about. It's not about prediction. It's not about selling a ministry. It's not about anybody rising up to say, I have the power to prophesy when this thing is going to end. And I have the power to predict what will happen. This is not genuine biblical prophecy. It does not serve the plans and purposes of God. It serves the carnal man who wants to know the future. The future. And this is divination. So let it be clear. I'm not going to be going into any of that which I personally consider a shame for anyone who call themselves prophets or people of God. Having said that, let me explain what brought me here at this time. I had a strong sense from days now that on the 1st of May, a new word from heaven would be released. Mind you, I didn't say April 30, okay? I read, I heard, and I think everything that I read and heard about April 30 was a shame to the body of Christ. I'm so sorry. Because the Lord was completely silent. He was silent. If I can say one thing for sure, the Lord was completely silent. So everybody who spoke, spoke out of their own hearts. Or maybe bellies, to be more precise. But from May 1, I knew there was a word coming from heaven. And I was very cautious not to rush into anything. I was extremely careful not to make God say anything. So I was pretty prepared to be totally quiet and mind my business. In fact, in the last few days, I did a teaching in English the other day and today in Greek on sanctification. And I thought this is probably going to be all that I'm going to be doing. But after I finished this Greek teaching earlier today, something was burning in my spirit that I need to prepare for another video today. I was seeking the Lord and I was not receiving anything. What I did receive was the clarity that he was ready to speak. And then a bit more than an hour ago, maybe two hours ago, I felt that I needed to prepare for a live message without knowing what I'm going to say. And I, I eventually came to the conclusion that the Lord did not want me to be prepared in any way. He just wanted me to present myself and say whatever he would like me to say. Now, having said that, while I was preparing, while I was setting up this broadcast and I was going to write down a few words as to what this is going to be, I found myself typing some thoughts, which I thought they were going to be just a few thoughts, but it ended up being actually a whole text. Now, I finished it. I read it. I discerned it as much as I could. Is this from the Lord? But I know it was not off me. I knew I was only typing what I was sensing to be arising out of my spirit. So there is this thing that I want to do. I want to read to you what I believe the Lord spoke through my spirit and I just typed out. Now, will this be the only thing that I will do? At this point, I know not. I know that I had a thought before I started, which was that I was going to do a quick overview of where we are at this time in this year. Shall I do that today? Shall I do that at all? I don't know, but I'm ready to do that too, because I wanted to speak to you out of Joshua chapter five and explain where we are at and where we're going. 
As I'm speaking right now, I don't know if I will do it in this message or at all. All I'm saying is it was in the back of my mind, so we will all find out if the Lord wants me to do that. So, why don't we read what I wrote? This was typed in less than an hour ago. Without me thinking at all, I was just simply typing what I felt was coming out of my spirit. So let's have a go at it. As we are making progress along this new year, 2020, as we are experiencing some of the new and unprecedented things which are happening, which we consider as acts of God directly or indirectly, as we are wondering what is coming next, as conflicts of every form and shape arise constantly from every source and direction on local and micro as well as global and macro levels. As insecurity increases in the face of the consequences of the ongoing turmoil that is shaking the planet. As daily death of many people is regarded as mere statistics by increasing numbers of people who do not have any sympathy or concern, but just want their lives back no matter how many die, as long as they have their own way. As political fanaticism is ready to sacrifice whatever it takes, and as many as needed at the altar of political gain. As prophets of all kinds arise and media is trying to exploit their speculative desires, which they call prophecies, based on fear and desire to see an end to this ongoing turmoil. As increasing numbers of people continue to try to grab the opportunity to make a name for themselves. As ambition and selfishness tramples underfoot love and care for others, shown through service based on truth and humility. And uh, as the Lord continues to observe and record everyone's words, actions, as well as thoughts and intentions of heart, the scales are being set and preparing to measure. And uh, there will be those who are found approved to be entrusted. And... Uh, there will be those who will be found lacking and judged unworthy of reward, whose own measure of measuring to others identifies them as having failed to pass the test of being approved to be used of God. In the midst of this utter lack of security, when the strength of man is failing, when God delivers men to the delusions of their own hearts, when people are being set up for judgment, caught in the snares of their own words and actions, when God is setting the stage for the greatest and most astonishing manifestation of His greatness, glory, and power in the midst of the greatest tribulation the world has known since World War II. This is a time when those who know God are resting in the midst of the storm while the storm is raging all about. Meanwhile, the armies of heaven continue to prepare for a great advancement of the kingdom of God in the face of an impending great defeat of the forces of darkness that will leave the world in shock and awe fury and anger as the agents of darkness are constantly being delivered from frustration to worse and increasing measures of frustration as they realize day in and day out they shall never win. This is a time and a season that God said enough is enough. Now they shall know that I am who I say that I am, and I do what I have said that I would do. 
Who shall stand up to me and say, no, you won't, no, you can't? They shall be consumed by the breath of my mouth, as my plans shall come to pass, and my purpose shall be established. For I will do all that I have decreed that I would do, and there is no one who can stop me. For the Lord is saying at this time, as it is written in Isaiah 42, from verse 14, I have held my peace a long time. I have been still and restrained myself. Now I will cry like a woman in labor. I will pant and gasp at once. I will lay waste the mountains and hills and dry up all their vegetation. I will make the rivers coastlands and I will dry up the pools. I will bring the blind by the way they did not know. I will lead them in paths they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and crooked places straight. These things I will do for them and not forsake them. They shall be turned back. They shall be greatly ashamed who trust in carved images, who say to the molded images, You are our gods. Hear you deaf and look you blind that you may see. The one verse preceding that speaks prophetically into this hour, and that is Isaiah 42, verse 13. The Lord shall go forth like a mighty man. He shall stir up his zeal like a man of war. He shall cry out, yes, shout aloud. He shall prevail against his enemies. And so shall he indeed. And at this time, the Lord is calling his holy remnant, those who fear his name, those who are hidden under the shadow of his mighty wings. And I'm reading out of Isaiah 42, now from verse 8. I am the Lord, that is my name. And my glory I will not give to another, nor my praise to carved images. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Sing to the Lord a new song and his praise from the ends of the earth, you who go down to the sea and all that is in it, you coastlands and you inhabitants of them. Let the wilderness and its cities lift up their voice. The villages that Kedar inhabits, let the inhabitants of Sela sing. Let them shout from the top of the mountains. Let them give glory to the Lord and declare his praise in the coastlands. I do believe the Lord wants me to transition to Joshua chapter 5. Let's put this in context. <clears throat> Those of you who have not watched my prophetic messages over the last several months, and especially over the new year since we entered the year 2020, probably are not familiar with a word that I have been giving and have been following up on that we have entered by entering the new era that is marked by the new year and the new decade, we have entered a time in God's timeline for the earth that is equivalent to the time that the Israelites who had come out of Egypt 
The time came for them that Moses died, Joshua took over, and they transitioned from the desert to the valleys of Jericho with the intent to destroy Jericho and make a way to possess the promised land. I'm not going back to repeat everything that I have said. The last thing I said, probably about two months ago, roughly before the coronavirus pandemic broke out, the last thing I said is that we had reached the point where the children of Israel were in the valleys of Jericho and were called by God to do the second circumcision. Those of you who have not, who have not watched my teaching dash prophetic word concerning the second circumcision, concerning the transition from the desert to the promised land, please find that video on YouTube and listen to it. And then the next thing we knew is that the Passover was coming. So the last that I spoke was that we were waiting for verse 10 to occur. And verse 10 in Joshua 5 says, Now the children of Israel camped in Gilgal and kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month at twilight on the plains of Jericho. Now, the Passover has now taken place. And the Passover of this year, 2020, prophetically speaking, is the fulfillment or the manifestation of the Passover that is marked in Joshua 5.10. And then there is another very interesting verse which has not been fully unpacked as yet. Prophetically, I found myself teaching on it in our house of prayer in Athens, Shalom Center. I do not recall right now if I ever taught this in English. Probably I have not. This probably exists only in a Greek teaching, either at the end of February or beginning of March. And it was based on verse 11 that says, And they ate of the produce of the land on the day after the Passover, unleavened bread and parched grain on the very same day. And what did I say? I said that a transition would be coming on the occasion of the Passover of this year. And this transition is such a major transition as it was for the Israelites who came out of Egypt. And that was the transition for them. Then the manna seized on the day after they had eaten the produce of the land and the children of Israel no longer had manna, but they ate the food of the land of Canaan that year. Now, that is a major transition. After 40 years of being fed by the manna from heaven, now the manna ceased. And I think in this video message, I will not attempt to explain this. I believe I need to wait for the Lord's timing to unpack this in a way that as I'm speaking to you, my intellect has not fully grasped yet. We are still waiting in the period after the Passover and we have celebrated the Passover this year. And may I remind you that God has always worked on the basis of the timeline that he has set and the landmarks of that timeline are the feasts of the Lord. Think of Jesus. He was not crucified at any time of the year, but the very specific time of the Passover. The Holy Spirit did not come at any particular time of the year. It came on the Feast of Shavuot, the 50th day, the Pentecost day. Everything the Lord does coincides with the feasts that he has given. It is a prophetic timeline that reveals what God does. And it may be different from year to year, decade from decade, generation from generation, but it is of some sort a prophetic fulfillment of what is already written. And in our generation, in the year 2020, we are now in a new first ever prophetic fulfillment 
of these things. These things may have been fulfilled before, over and over again in generations past. In the particular setting, in the particular context of those generations of those years. But we are now experiencing a new fulfillment which we are called to understand and walk with God, work with God as he is calling us to advance his kingdom on earth, as he called Joshua to advance the kingdom of God through the Israelites, destroying the stronghold of Jericho and possessing the promised land. We are in a season of major transition, which is described by Joshua 5, 11 and 12. This is what is happening right now. Let me repeat, we do not have, I do not have yet the full revelation of what it means, but I can keep the surface of it for now. We are in a major transition when we are called to unlearn what we knew for an entire generation of decades, and we are called to learn how to do a new thing which we have never done before. And it has to do with the produce of the land. It has to do with us bringing from heaven the reality of the spirit realm of heaven to sanctify the land that the kingdom of God may permeate, may prevail, may sanctify the land, that the land may no longer vomit its inhabitants as it currently has been doing but that the land may produce the good fruit for which it was created in the first place before sin took over. But we are called to eradicate the sin, destroy the works of darkness, bring in the kingdom of God, and the kingdom of God begins with holiness. And I will stop here. I will not try to interpret this any further. But what I will say is this. Something amazing happened. A life-changing event. In verse 13. I will repeat something that I have said. If you've heard me say it before, please forgive me for repeating. Joshua was a faithful servant of God by serving Moses. Joshua is recorded in the scriptures to be in the tent of meeting, in the tent of serving God daily. Joshua saw the hand of God when he was victorious in the battlefield. Joshua experienced the manna, experienced the meat from heaven through the birds, experienced the water coming out of the rock, experienced for 40 years amazing miracles. The presence of God was with them daily in the cloud, in the pillar of fire. And then Joshua, who knew God so well that God spoke to him. You can read again Joshua chapter 1. I've spoken on it several times. He knew the voice of God. He knew the ways of God. He knew the miracles and the power of God. But here in verse 13 of Joshua 5, this man of God, Joshua, Towards the end of his life, a mature man, an elderly man by our standards, who lived his whole life with God, now sees something for the first time, and he does not know what he is beholding. Let's read. And it came to pass, when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, a man stood opposite him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? Joshua did not recognize the person he was looking at. He went up to him as man to man to speak to him. But when the answer came, No, 
but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshipped and said to him, What does my Lord say to his servant? Then the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, Take your sandal off your foot, for the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. Please listen to me. We think we know God. We think we have seen God, heard God. We even think we represent God. Some of us speak for God. And we have the boldness, and rightly so, to open up our mouth and say, Thus says the Lord. And listen, there was no greater man in his generation than Joshua, being the leader of all the Israelites called by God to lead them just like Moses had, having known God for all his life, having been singled out, anointed and appointed by God. This man, Joshua, saw a manifestation of the Lord that he had never known before. He even dared walk up to him as man walks up to another man. It's only when the commander of the army of the Lord opened up his mouth that Joshua knew who he was standing in front of. Some of us are about to have the most life-changing encounters we have ever had with God. Some of us are going to see God in a way we have never experienced before. Some of us are going to have encounters that will change not just our lives, but the entire planet, as the entire planet is already changing, but not quite in the way that we are called to change the planet. Because the planet is changing, but not by anyone leading the change. The planet is changing because the planet is shaking, because the planet is being destroyed when it comes to the strength of man, when it comes to the buildings of man, when it comes to the pride of man. God is tearing everything down because he is the one who will be exalted. He is the one who will rise up and he is the one who will accomplish what he said that he will would accomplish. He is the one who shall rise up as a fierce warrior, as a man of war, just like we read out of Isaiah chapter 42. And this is the same man that appeared to Joshua. And he said, I am the commander of the army of the Lord. And I think and I hope that we all know who that is, for that is Jesus, the Christ of God. He was not the Christ of God in the pre-Christ era. He was the Jesus of eternity. He was the Son of God. He was the Lord to whom the Lord said in Psalm 110, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. That's the Lord who appeared to Joshua. It's the Lord who later was unclothed of his majesty and became a common man, a bond servant, to be born in the earth out of Virgin Mary by the word of the angel and the overshadowing of the Almighty that impregnated Mary so that Jesus was born on the earth. But this is the one who appeared to Joshua as commander of the army of the Lord. And I am telling you, we are about to experience a new manifestation of the commander of the army of the Lord appearing to the earth at this time. And he appeared to Joshua for a purpose. And he is going to appear to this generation, to the ecclesia of this generation for a purpose. What was the purpose that he appeared to Joshua? He appeared to him because of Jericho. He appeared to him so that he could tell him, as we read in Joshua 6, verse 2. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, its king and the mighty man 
of valor. And the Lord is about to say to his ecclesia, and it may be different in every territory, it may be different in every region, it may be different in every local ecclesia, it may be different among different apostolic fears of authority. I don't know what, will, what God will do throughout the earth, but whatever it is, it's going to be majestic and it's going to be a manifestation of the army of God marching against Jericho, whatever Jericho is where you are. I can tell you about my own nation, and I think I can tell you a little bit more about Europe. But I cannot tell you about Asia or Africa or Latin America. I have ideas about the United States, but I'll keep my ideas to myself. Because my authority at this time is for my nation, Hellas, known as Greece in English, and my continent, Europe, of which I am a citizen. And there is a Jericho in Hellas, and there is a Jericho in Europe, and it is about to collapse. It is about to fall down as the Ecclesia of Jesus Christ is rising up to march against this Jericho. Now, how will it happen? When will it happen? How quick will that be? I do not know. I do not wish to know. I'm not interested in knowing. I have no interest in predicting the future. I only have one interest in mind. Lord, what are you saying to your servant today? How do you want me to pray today? What do you want me to decree today? And the Lord today says, sing to the Lord a new song. And this is what I'm called to do today. Today, I'm called to sing to the Lord a new song for today. Today, I am called to continue sleeping in the midst of the storm, completely unafraid of everything that is going on all around me, because the Lord told me, hide under the shadow of my wings and wait until the storm passes. And this is what I'm doing. And I am resting in his perfect shalom. And so do I advise you to do. But the point is, we are now in the season which is described in Acts chapter 1. This is something that first occurred to me a good number of years ago. I can't tell if it was 15 or 20. But there was a year when the Lord, after the Passover of that year, began to minister to me out of Acts chapter 1. And you know, until that time to me, Acts chapter 1 was no more but a historic account. Let's read the historic account. Acts 1.1 1, 1. The former account I made of Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So it was roughly 15 years ago, give or take two or three, when the Lord for the first time explained to me, this is not just a historical account. This is a historical account that is being fulfilled prophetically during the timing of the kingdom of God as the realm of heaven coincides and interacts with the earthly realm. Do you know that there are times and seasons in the realm of heaven? If there weren't, there would be no times and seasons in the realm of, of the earth. For the earth is no more but a reflection, a copy and shadow of things which are in the realm of heaven. So we now are, prophetically speaking, in a season of 40 days post Passover and before the Feast of Pentecost, before the Feast of Shavuot, known as the Feast of Weeks. This is a season that the Lord is speaking. He may not be speaking to everyone, but He is definitely speaking to those 
who have ears to hear, make time to listen and offer ourselves as a living sacrifice to sit at the feet of Jesus and learn from him. Learn from him, not by using our intellect to interpret, not by using our speculative ability and capacity to predict, but by simply shutting up and shutting down and just receiving the download from heaven. This very day, I received a message from a pastor in Italy, from the city of Napoli. This very day, he shared with me the specific instruction he received from the Lord. The very specific instruction he received from the Lord. Now, I'm not going to play it. I thought I would play it back, but I'm not going to do that. About his church, about his ministry. Yeah, he is a man of God who is listening to the voice of God. And I wrote to him and I said to him that I'm so thankful to God for him that he is following God's timeline. He is in line with God's activity and he is listening to what the Lord is sharing with him. And you know what? For him and his ministry, life will never be the same again because he received specific instructions for a transition of his ministry. Yes, the Lord is speaking to his leaders. If we have ears to hear without adding of our own flesh, without pursuing for our own ministries, pursuing ambition, pursuing interest, pursuing fame, pursuing whatever we may have as a reason for saying things that the Lord has not said. The Lord has called us to himself in these 40 days to simply shut up and listen. Now, when the Lord is speaking, we should also be speaking. But when the Lord is speaking, he serves one purpose alone. The kingdom of God. More of the kingdom of God. For he has given us a commandment that never fails. Seek first the kingdom of God. And then together with it. And God's justice or the justice of the kingdom of God. I know in English it's translated, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's not what it says. It says, seek the kingdom of God and seek God's justice, the justice of the kingdom of God on earth. That is too big to even make any further comments on it right now. Suffice it to say, injustice is perpetrated by the forces of darkness. But God is rising up to bring his justice. But he is waiting for us to be the ones who call for his justice, decree his justice. He gave us the authority to his ecclesia. He said, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. He said to us when he rose from the dead, I am giving you the authority to forgive sin but I'm also giving you the authority to retain sin. And the Lord is calling us, the leaders of the body of Christ, the leaders of the Ecclesia, but not quite all of us, but those who have been found worthy to be entrusted with authority for the new season. Those who have been found to be the Joshua's that will lead from now on. For there are many who have been Moses and they are already dead or dying. And for some, this is physical. For some, it is the removal of the mantle that has been upon them. For the Lord says, I am removing many a mantle these days. And many of you shall be speaking on my behalf only to prove yourselves that you are not hearing my voice. You are hearing the voice of your own hearts. For I am removing the mantle of authority of you, says the Lord, for you have not been found worthy to be entrusted with the authority which I am about to pour out into my ecclesia. But it cannot be upon all the thousands who present themselves and say, yes, Lord, use me, for I will choose the 300 of Gideon who are worthy to be entrusted with the power and authority to attack 
the stronghold of the enemy and bring confusion in the forces of darkness, says the Lord. And only I know who are those that I have found approved. And in his silence, I remain silent. 